Political Violence by Mary, Case, Asil, Aya, Dua, Rodrigo, and Holly. Political violence is described as the deliberate use of power and force to achieve political goals. Our chosen case for this assignment is the political crisis and migration in Afghanistan. In August 2021, the Taliban took over Afghanistan, causing tens of thousands of Afghans to flee, often by desperate measures. The Taliban is a brutal fundamentalist religious group that held power over most of Afghanistan during the late 1990s. Numerous Afghans are being targeted for their past work or association with coalition forces. Women and girls are also no longer allowed to work or study, being another motivation to flee their country. Media coverage in the United States. Here is a picture of a Washington Post article. According to them, hundreds of Afghan civilians are, have somehow managed to get on a U.S. Air Force cargo aircraft, which left Afghanistan for Qatar. The Political is a political journalism company based in Arlington County, Virginia. And according to them, thousands of Afghans were in a hurry to reach the Kabul International Air Airport, some so desperate to escape the Taliban regime in their country that they held on to American military jets as it took off. Here is an image of the Taliban fighters standing guard on the road leading to the Hamid Karazi International Airport in Kabul, Afghanistan on August 16th. And according to the insider, United States helicopters chased away crowds of panicked and nervous Afghans swarming its large aircraft plane. The video I'm about to show you is a AH-64 helicopter that is flying just a few feet above the ground in an attempt to drive crowds away from that aircraft as it moves down the runway. And the Daily Beast is an American news website that writes about politics, media, and pop culture. According to an Afghan journalist who worked with American media and is therefore most likely a target in the eyes of the Taliban, told the Daily Beast as gunfires echoed in the background that he and eight family members have been trying to get out of Kabul since the city fell. Here is an image that was less, less than 24 hours after the Taliban regained power in Afghanistan. On the slide, you can see a picture of the CNN report on what Afghanistan looks like as the Taliban takes over. The cable news network, commonly known as CNN, is an American basic cable and satellite television channel. According to CNN, U.S. intelligence analysis predicted it would take several weeks for the Afghanistan government to fall to Taliban fighters, although they were wrong and it took only a few days. The New York Times is an American daily newspaper based in New York City. According to the New York Times, the chaos at the airport prompted the U.S. military to tempor temporarily suspend evacuations, both military and civilian, to clear people from the airfield. But thousands of U.S. troops have now been rushed back into Kabul to help secure the airport, the last place in the city being guarded by Americans, to continue getting people out of the war-torn country. Here is a satellite image showing crowds in Hamid Karazi International Airport in Kabul on Monday. According to this New York Times article, since the United States and its allies took down the Taliban back in 2001, the rights of Afghan women has shown recognizable progress. Afghan girls were going to school and Afghan women were getting jobs and degrees. Media coverage in Mexico. The U.S. president is the target of criticism because the main factor of the crisis in Afghanistan was his decision to withdraw the troops that still remained. The Taliban could begin to advance in a period of between one and a half, three years, they achieved in three months, with the most significant advance in a week and the takeover of the capital Kabul in a weekend. It is incredible the impressive ignorance that the military, that the military American intelligence investors and the government have or had until a month ago of the country they had occupied for 20 years. It is, it is incredible the brutal ignorance of what the Taliban were. The U.S. employment was handled extraordinarily poorly. Execution over the last two years has been catastrophic. When the Taliban ruled Afghanistan between 1996 and 2001, they prohibited work, education, and entertainment for women. Tens of thousands of women around the world rally for Afghan women. They say, open the doors to Afghanistan. Public figures ask the Taliban regime to keep the borders open so that all those who wish to leave the country, especially women, who add an intolerable and additional cruelty to that suffered by Afghans of any condition. U.S. does not withdraw troops because their mission has been accomplished or their presence has been unsustain unsustainable or because they are no longer well received by the host government. None of these conditions correspond to the situation in which the United States found itself in Afghanistan at the beginning of the administration of President Joe Biden. The withdrawal was a choice. The result promised to be tragic.
major similarity shared between the United States media coverage and Mexico media coverage of Robert Dozen's case is a mention on how the people of Afghanistan are affected by the current situation, specifically a focus on the women. The media coverages bring up the Taliban and how their presence affects the Afghan women by restricting their rights and privileges. Though the main difference between the United States media coverage and the Mexico media coverage of our chosen case is the mention of United States involvement, the Latin American media coverage took a strong stance on how the current situation in Afghanistan was the fault of the U.S. mentioning how they should have ended the war in a more responsible, sustainable, and humane manner.